In the last video, we have solved a problem on income and expenditure account and balance sheet. In this video, we'll solve one more problem on income and expenditure account and balance sheet. Before we start with the transactions, keep ready the accounts, income and expenditure account as on the closing date and the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, capital fund, add surplus, any capital receipts, less deficit. If there is a deficit, we have to minus that. And if there are any special donations, special funds, if given, we'll take it as special fund in the balance sheet. Let us start the problem. We'll first take up the receipt side of the receipt and payment account, which starts with endowment fund, rupees 2 lakhs. Endowment fund is always a capital receipt. And as we have learned in the last problem, in the account, we take the revenue items and in the balance sheet, we take the capital items. Endowment fund is a capital receipt. So it has to come in the balance sheet as a capital receipt. Endowment fund, rupees 2 lakhs. All the capital receipts will take in the inner column so that we can total and then take it in the outer column. The next, tournament fund. Tournament fund, again, this is the fund received for a special purpose. It's a tournament fund. So we'll record that as a special fund, rupees 1 lakh. We'll take it in the inner column because if there are any tournament expenses, we can minus it. Next, entrance fees. Into bracket, it is mentioned, capitalized. Since they have mentioned it as capitalized, we'll show it as capital receipt. Remember, entrance fees can be capital or revenue. If the problem is silent, nothing is mentioned regarding entrance fees, we take that as an revenue receipt. But since it is mentioned that it is capital, we'll show it as a capital receipt. Entrance fees, rupees 6,000. Next, next item in the recent payment account, life membership fees. You require no adjustment for that, no explanation for that. Life membership fees is nothing but a capital receipt. Why? Because it is received only once from that particular member. It's a capital receipt. We'll take it as a capital receipt. Life membership fees, rupees 60,000. The next comes is donations. No adjustment on donations is given here. There is no tick mark also on that. Donations are general here. Now the question is general donations where they are to be taken. General donation either can be revenue item or a capital. It depends upon the amount. If the amount is small, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, that becomes a small donations, revenue in nature. But what is the amount given here in the account? 4 lakh rupees. It's a huge amount. So general donations of huge amount, we always treat that as a capital receipt. So capital receipt, 4 lakhs. Next, subscriptions. Subscription means what? The annual membership fees that is received from the members. We receive the fees every year. So that is not a capital item. It is a revenue item. Because it is recurring in nature. It's a revenue receipt. Revenue receipt will enter it in the account. Subscriptions. Now, this subscriptions has a tick mark. It has a tick mark means what? There is adjustment on that. So for that either one or two lines will leave so that adjustment can be done later. We'll take subscriptions in the inner column, 60,000 and for that we'll leave couple of lines. Next, fees from functions. Functions are organized by the organization every year, every half year, every quarter. So any fees received from the functions are always revenue in nature because that is recurring in nature. It's revenue, we'll record that as an revenue receipt in the account. 
fees from functions. We'll take it in the inner column, 240,000. To see that later on, whether we have any function expenses. Because we have any expenses, we can minus from 240,000. Now, that's all of on the receipt side. Let us start with the payment side of the account. The first item is salary. What is salary? Salary is nothing but the monthly remuneration paid to the workers. That is an revenue expenditure. You remember what is capital expenditure? Our expenditure is said to be capital if it fulfills any one of the three conditions. A new asset comes into existence. That means we have purchased a new asset. Improvement to the existing asset. That means we have done something to the asset in such a way that the value of the asset increases. Number three, discharge of fixed liability. Fixed liability means what? A non-recurring expenditure is being paid. If any one of these three conditions is fulfilled, we call it as capital or else it's a revenue expenditure. Salary, we pay monthly. That has to be a revenue expenditure. What is the amount? 72,000. It has a tick mark on that. That means there is an adjustment on that. We'll take it in the inner column. Salary, 72,000. Below that, a line is left to get that the adjustment done. The next, tournament expenses, 76,000. How much is the fund received? 1 lakh. Out of that 1 lakh fund, 76,000 we have incurred as tournament expenses, which we have to minus. And remaining fund will be shown as liability. Less tournament expenses. After minusing 76,000, 24,000 is the fund still remaining, which is shown as a liability. The next one, rent. Rent rupees 24,000. Rent is paid every month. Every month means that is not a non-recurring expense. It's a recurring expense. Recurring in the income and expenditure account. There is no tick mark on rent. That is the reason why rent I have taken directly in the outer column. Next, printing, 10,000. It has a tick mark. It has a tick mark means there is an adjustment on that. Let us take that in the inner column. Printing. Ten thousand in the inner column and provide some space to do the adjustment on that. Next, function expenses. Already we have shown the fees from function two like forty. How much are the function expenses? Honorarium and others total one lakh eighty thousand. So out of that two lakh forty, one lakh eighty thousand the organization has spent. Remaining becomes their income. So we'll minus the expenses. And remaining amount will show in the outer column. One lakh eighty thousand are the function expenses. We minus it. Sixty thousand is the fees from function remaining. Will be shown in the outer column. Next, sports equipment. It's in the receipt and payment account. That means what? It's a cash account. You are showing it on the payment side. That means we have purchased the equipment wherein cash goes out. Sports equipment purchased is nothing but a new asset comes into existence. Purchase of new asset, nothing but a capital expenditure. Capital expenditure in the balance sheet. Check out, does it has a tick mark? Yes. That means on that we have a adjustment. Let us record that. Sports equipment. 2,54,000 and leave the space for the adjustment. Next, furniture. Furniture again on the payment side that indicates what furniture is purchased. Purchase of furniture again a new asset comes into existence. Capital expenditure. Capital items in the balance sheet. Does it has a tick mark on that? No. Direct in the outer column. 1,28,000 will show. After furniture, postage, revenue expense, but it has some tick mark on that. 
Tick mark. We'll take it in the inner column. Postage. Amount. 3,000. After postage. Fixed deposit in bank. Cash deposited in bank in the fixed deposit account. Nothing but an investment. Investment is our asset. Asset in the balance sheet. 3 lakh rupees. The last item on the payment side. Cash balance. Cash balance means what? Cash in hand. Which is always an asset. Asset in the balance sheet. 19,000 rupees. So that's all from the resident payment account. Now let us take up the adjustments. Every adjustment will be posted twice. Once in the account. Once in the balance sheet. Let us see what is the first. Outstanding subscription. Outstanding subscription means what? Subscription which is yet to be received. Receivable. How much subscriptions are received already? 60,000. How much still we have to receive? 40,000, 60 and 40, total subscriptions, 1 lakh, let us add that, add, outstanding subscriptions, 40,000, so total, 1 lakh are the subscriptions, now the question is, how did I understand it is of the current year, whatever is given in the adjustments is of the current year, whatever is given in the adjustments, that is naturally as on the Closing date of this current year. So of current year. Second. Second entry for that. Outstanding subscription means subscription is income. Income is outstanding. Outstanding income means what? Receivable income. Receivable is an asset. Payable is a liability. This is receivable. We'll show it as an asset on the asset side. Outstanding subscription. Forty thousand. Let us take up the second adjustment. Outstanding expenses. There are two outstanding expenses given. Salary twenty four thousand. Printing ten thousand. Outstanding expense. How much salary already we have paid? Seventy two. Still, how much we have to pay? Twenty four. Let us add and take the total. Same for printing. How much printing is paid? Ten thousand. Outstanding is how much? Ten thousand will total and take in the outer column and then both will transfer it to the balance sheet yeah I outstanding salary 24,000 in the outer column 96,000 we have printing also outstanding I Outstanding printing 10,000 in the outer column 20,000. Salary and printing both are expenses. Expenses are outstanding, means payable. Payable is a liability. We'll show it as on the liability side. Outstanding printing 10,000. In the outer column, 34,000. Or directly 24 in the outer column, 10 in the outer column. That is no difference. Next. Sports equipments as on 31st March 2018 were valued at 2,4,000. What is the amount of sports equipment? 2,54,000. At the beginning of the year, when they, that has been purchased. At the end of the year, the value of sports equipment the value of asset has been decreased to 2,4,000. That means decreased by 50,000. The value of asset decreases. That is nothing but depreciation. Depreciation is a loss. Let us first show it as a loss in the account. The original value of sports equipment 2,54. The closing value, return down value 2,4. So it is reduced by 50,000. 50,000 is depreciation. 
Two lakh fifty four is the value what we have shown in the balance sheet, which has to be now reduced down to two lakh four thousand as there is depreciation. Let us minus depreciation. Less depreciation fifty thousand value in the outer column two lakh four thousand. Last postage stamps on hand rupees four hundred. How much stamps we have purchased three thousand. We have shown that as expenditure. But out of this three thousand four hundred stamps are still remaining. Remaining stamps is stock. Stock is an asset. So we cannot show full three thousand rupees as expenditure. Of that three thousand four hundred are still remaining with us. So how much stamps are used? Two thousand six hundred stamps used becomes our expenditure. Let us see how to record that. Postage stamps on hand four hundred when you minus stamps used are two thousand six hundred. Second entry in the balance sheet stamps on hand is an asset, stock, stock of stamps. Show it as stamps on hand, rupees four hundred. That's all. This is how we pass the transactions in the account and in the balance sheet. Now let us balance the account. As we know, if the account shows a credit balance, that is surplus. If the account shows a debit balance, that is a deficit. Let us balance and see what we get. The total of the account one lakh ninety two thousand six hundred. The total which is more we write on both the sides. One lakh ninety two six hundred is the total of the debit side. That means debit balance we get. Debit side total is more. Debit balance means that's a deficit. What we are going to get now one lakh ninety two six hundred minus one lakh sixty. The difference what we get is thirty two thousand six hundred. Nothing but deficit into bracket. We can show it as balancing figure. Why to show that as balancing figure? So when you revise, there shouldn't be any doubt from where deficit came. It's not given in the problem. How did it came in the account? You can understand balancing figure means it is not given in the account. We have got it by balancing the account. Now this deficit will transfer to balance sheet. Deficit thirty-two thousand six hundred. There is no capital fund. There is no surplus. Now capital receipts. This total two four six lakh. This comes to six lakh sixty thousand. From that six lakh sixty-six. Let us minus the deficit of thirty-two thousand six hundred. So when you minus six lakh thirty-three thousand four hundred is the capital fund. Capital fund of this year, the closing fund, will be taken in the next year as the opening capital fund. Now let us balance our balance sheet. As we know, it should tally. The total of the liability side, six lakh ninety one thousand four hundred. Assets must also be same. Two lakh four, one twenty eight three lakhs. The total is also six lakh ninety one thousand four hundred. Liability is an asset tally. Balance sheet should tally. In this video, we have solved a problem on income and expenditure account and balance sheet. In the next video, we'll solve the problem with same income and expenditure and balance sheet, but with one extra: how to open an opening balance sheet. Thank you.